what buoyed the 52% post-tax profit that uh, CFC Steinbeck Bank registered in the first half of the year? I think pleasingly that there were a range of factors that actually contributed to that. So many of our businesses actually performed very well. And surprisingly, in the context of our business, because trading is a, a big piece of our business, that was flat year on year, only up 1%. So the growth came from the other areas of our business. In particular, we're beginning to see a, a payback for the investments that we've made. So our personal and business banking market, we performed very ple pleasingly well. Uh, SBG Securities, which is our stock trading business, it, they increased their market share of an increased market. So market turnover was up 37%. So a rising tide lifts all boats, but beyond that, they also increased their market share. And then in our transactional business, we had uh, good volume growth in trade finance, uh, and the, that drove commission earnings. We've had an increase in customer numbers across the board. So transactional revenues, fee and commission income is also up. Greg, you did mention that uh, there was an uptick in the non-performing loans. Where did you see the greatest growth in defaults in that period? The accounts in, in which we <coughs> uh, have had an uptick in, in NPLs are generally in the agricultural sector. Uh, and those are across horticulture and some difficulties in the sugar. Agriculture is a big part of the economy and most banks have an exposure to agriculture in one way or another. Yeah, I think from our exposure to agriculture, we well diversified. Um, so when people look at our exposure to agriculture, we need to be quite clear where we're taking production risk, which would be impacted by the weather, uh, and where we are actually facilitating exports, so trade finance. So generally our exposure is dominated by financing exports, receivables, some production exposure, some production cost financing. Uh, so we will be, to the extent that the economy is impacted by lower T volumes, lower T prices, there is a knock-on effect, uh, particularly suppliers to those industries as well. So, yeah, it, it is being felt. On matters interest rate, and I do recall that during the briefing you did mention that the bank reduced the lending rate by about 300 basis points. But you also did mention that uh, with regards to the impact of the Kenya bankers' reference rate, which was introduced by the central bank, that we're likely to have... Uh, depressed uh, margins going forward. Let's talk about that. Yeah, we think it's inevitable that as uh, consumers become more aware of what are the components uh, taken into account in the pricing of their individual facilities or the credit that they have from banks, is that there will be, as a result of greater cr transparency, greater negotiation. So um, we do think that there will be some compression in the spread over KBBR as a result of greater transparency. But we do think that that's, uh, that is a, a phenomenon which plays out over time. It's not an overnight event. As far as the impact on us is concerned, you will, and you make mention that we in fact reduced our base lending rate very aggressively um, last year. That really was in, in anticipation and recognition of KBBR. So we don't expect that there won't be any impact on us. Clearly there will be. But we think that we've anticipated a lot of that impact by the actions that we've already taken. Um, and these things will play themselves out. Um, but clearly we're def determined to defend our market share and will do so. Greg, I'm very cognizant of how the bank is leveraging on Senate Bank's a very large balance sheet. But as a bank, what are some of the opportunities that, that you see on the ground and how are you positioning to take them up? Of course, I'm looking at key sectors such as oil and gas, infrastructure development that we have seen that the governments have you've been very aggressive on. How are you positioning yourself? Obviously, there's the, the well-known fact that we're part of the Standard Bank Group, but perhaps less appreciated is the fact that ICBC, the largest bank in the world and the Chinese bank at that, is also a shareholder in the group. So what we're seeing is our ability to, to connect all of those, those various different markets and factors. So to the extent that Chinese bilateral aid and or investment is a factor in the growth of the economy in Kenya and in the development of infrastructure in particular, we are very well positioned as a result of the shareholding that we have, but not just the shareholding, the day-to-day -day cooperation that we have where these issues are dealt with on a collaborative basis. Now the scale of the projects in Kenya are such that domestic banks on their own are too small 
to finance those projects. So we're very well positioned in the sense of actually the resource availability. And of course, if we talk about opportunities, there must be threats. What are some of those challenges that you see going forward that pose a risk, not just to the business, but also to the macroeconomic environment of the country? I think the issues around the security are obviously a continuing uh, concern. And that's um, not just the situation vis-a-vis -vis al Shabaab and so on, but also security more generally. The fact that we have a particularly difficult situation in South Sudan. So the geopolitical risks remain. Um, but again, we're encouraged by the fact that in the extent of the dialogue and the engagement in various different forums. So again, we are confident that these are temporary setbacks, crosswinds, uh, disruptions that will need to be dealt with. But we're confident that there's the institutional capacity to, to deal with those. And then more broadly, obviously, Kenya is a very attractive destination for new entrants. And to the extent that global players are perhaps preoccupied by difficulties there in the backyard, we see that there's a temporary reprieve. But we don't, by any manner of means, see that as being permanent. So we expect greater competition from new entrants as a feature uh, in a strategic sense, if not in an in, in immediate uh, sense.